Okay, let's go. Last time we spoke about the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash and why the Beit HaMikdash should destroy the second Beit HaMikdash. So we'll speak on the same topic but from a different perspective. We mentioned that the Gemara in Yerushalmi says, I'm going to read to you the words. It says the second Beit HaMikdash, it says the Makirim Anu Otam, Shayu Giyim Bitoram. The second Beit HaMikdash was the time, it was the generation of the Tanaim. It says during that time, the Gemara says, People would always be learning Torah. People would come out of the shul, they would run to shiur. People would go to Daf Yomi. People would make Siyum Mishnayot, Siyum Mishnayot. There were no Sifarim left and right. There would be a lot of Torah. It was the generation of Tanaim. People would go to the shur of Rabbi Yezdar Agadol, Rabbi Akiva. There would be, not, people wouldn't be involved like the way, you know, people today all over the place. And it says, everybody was like that. Everybody was like that. It's not a certain community, a certain crowd, a certain people. Everybody was like that. Yegeim Torah. It didn't say they were learning Torah. Yegeim Torah means they were toiling in Torah. They were able to open up in Farashim. They were able to learn Biyun. They were able to toil, to be able to dwell in depth. And then it says, "Vezehinim be mitzvot." You have to look at the wording of the uh, of the Gemara and how careful it is with the words that they used. It says, "Vezehinim be mitzvot." It didn't say they fulfilled mitzvot. It says they were careful with mitzvot. Was it even careful with mitzvot? They would go buy the best filins, buy the best etrog, make the nicest sukkah. They would go to the mikvah. They would have a nate. They would be so careful with mitzvot. Everything would have to be. Perfect. They would get the most mehudar wine for Kiddush. They would be very careful when it came to the performance of mitzvot. They would do everything to the fullest extent to make sure that every mitzvah they do would be good. Zehirim be mitzvot. It says they were careful with mitzvot. Not that you just fulfilled mitzvot. Uba ma'asrot. It says also they were very careful to give ma'aser. You know, today you have to run after people. Did you give him Isaac? Did you give him Aser? Does this need support? That needs support. You need to support the shoes. You need to support the, the yeshivot and so on. It says during this generation, people were giving Aser. He didn't even have to ask. Everybody used to give. Everybody gave Aser. It sounds like the gener- It sounds like a like a very big generation, like a very hush of generation. It sounds like a generation of very righteous people. If I'll tell you that there would be a generation like this today, you think this is the generation of Mashiach? No. Everybody's learning Torah and everybody's giving Ma'asrod, right? Everybody's very careful mitzvot. Everybody's midagdek kala kebachamuram. They're very careful with kashrut. They're very careful to buy Bet Yosef me. They're very careful on Yashan. They're very careful in Pat Yisrael. They're so careful in every single mitzvah that there is. They're very careful to give all their Ma'asrod properly and to support them in the Chachamim. It's a clear Gemara. They had good midot, they were very nice, they were very smiley, they were very friendly. You would come to your neighbor and say, look, I want to go on vacation for a week. Can you babysit my kid? Yeah, sure, no problem. They would watch your kid for you. It sounds like from the Gemara, they would be great people. Now you tell me, such people, how could it be that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? How could it be the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? They sound like the greatest people ever. It sounds like this would be the, what we were trying to do. In every generation, this sounds like this is it. It says one, the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. There's about 18 kilometers of dead bodies. And the, the, the king did not allow them to be buried for seven years. It says, Nishpach damam kamayim sivivot Yerushalayim. Their blood was spilled all over Yerushalayim like water. These are the people. These are the people that were killed during the second Beit HaMikdash with the permission of Hashem. Of course, nothing in the world happens without Hashem. But how could it be? What was their sin, we said? But what was the sin at Chinam, he says? He says, Shayu ovim et ha'mamonu sinim zelazen. It says, 
it was jealousy and hatred. They could have done anything, but it was jealousy and hatred. So the, right now it's the same thing. So the question is, why is jealousy and hatred so bad? It's so bad, jealousy and hatred, but look how much they did. It says, you know the Mepharshim, you know why they say why? It's because they had no imuna in Hashem. They didn't believe in Hashem. They didn't have bitachon in Hashem. They didn't trust that everything that Hashem does is for the best. A guy would come out of shul, he would just davenate, he would just finish a mesechen and a daf yomi. He had a customer that made a big order with him today. He comes out, suddenly the customer calls him and tells him that, I don't want the order. He just made a big order and now he got stuck with it. What does he do? How does he react? Right there and then you know exactly who this person is. It's not that he davenates and he learned the Gemara that can tell you what kind of big tzaddik he is. Does he know at that moment that this is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted? Does he say, okay, listen, he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. This is what Hashem wanted. That's the Nisayan of where it defines who a person really is. Or if a person, right, comes home and he sees his neighbor building a, a massive house, right? Does it bother him inside? Does he feel jealous? Does he say, no, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives everybody what they're supposed to have. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows what everybody's supposed to have. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives everybody what they need. Right? A person, Lo Aleinu Chas V'Shalom, walks and gets hit by a car. He can't walk now for the next three, four weeks. He has casts. Does he accept that it's Mina Shemayim? A person has a neighbor, Every Shabbat this neighbor comes, he makes a barbecue and turns on the music loud. And he always tells him, Can you please stop? The guy doesn't care, he doesn't listen. He throws garbage over, over the fence into your property. <laughs> this is at this moment, will tell you who you really are. You could come home after being Mahadur and all the mitzvahs in the world. But if a person doesn't recognize that everything in this world is from Hashem, doesn't realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like the Chavot HaLevavot says, nobody in the world could do anything bad or good to you, not unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu decreed it. The Chavot HaLevavot says, nobody could do anything to you, not unless Hashem decreed it. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't give the okay, it would never happen. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't give the okay, it would never happen. So this was their sin. Why did they hate each other? Why did they love money so much? It's because they didn't believe that everything in the world is Makadish Baruch Hu. They could have done everything else. The Gemara says by Doeg and Achitof and the Gemara and Sanajan brings that there were such big Tamidi Chachamim that they were able to ask the Chachamim three, four hundred questions. There were giants in Torah and the Chachamim wouldn't be able to answer. But Hashem calls them Rishaim. The Gemara says, "Rishayim malachem l'sepem l'sepen chukai." Right? The Kadosh Baruch Hu was in Rishayim. The Gemara says, "What do you mean Rishayim? Look how massive they were in Torah. Look how much they knew. They had a beard, peyot, whatever you want. They look like they just came down from Shemayim." What does the Gemara say? "Kol Torata meitan misafav lachutz." Everything was only lip service. Everything was only on the outside. It was all one big external image. It was all a show. The Gemara says, Rachmana libabai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants a person's heart. A person, Hashem wants a person to be real. Hashem wants a person to be real. A person has to be really believing in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It says, this was, their, this was where they failed in the second Beit HaMikdash. Is that what? That they didn't believe, in, they didn't trust that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world. They didn't realize that everything that happens is Mina Shemaim. Right? When something would happen to them, they didn't think, okay, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one who orchestrated this, he made this happen. Like the Rambam writes, why are you not allowed to have a grudge against somebody? Why are you not allowed to take revenge against somebody? Right? Say, somebody came, you made yourself, uh, I don't know, you get, just got yourself a swimming pool. Uh, you just got yourself a swimming pool. You got yourself a brand new car. Right? Suddenly a neighbor's kid comes, your neighbor's kid comes, takes a toy and he scratches the whole car. Shh, the whole entire car. He scratches the whole entire car. Say you got yourself a Mercedes or something. You go to the father and say, look what your kid did. You should pay for it. I need to take it to the body shop. 
It tells you, listen, what kids do is their problem. I don't have to take responsibility. Right? So how is the person going to react to that? Is he going to say, this is also me and Hashemayim? Or is he going to start cursing him and hating him and become enemies with him? If somebody, you went to all of his parties, this is very common. Somebody, you went to all of his parties. You made a, you made a party, he didn't come to your party. How are you going to react? Are you going to say, look at this guy, ungrateful. I go to all of his parties, doesn't come, disrespectful. I'm not going to go to his parties anymore. Right? Does the person realize that, no, this is what HaKadosh Baruch wanted. Does he realize that everything in this world happens to Hashem or not? So if somebody steals from you one million dollars, you say this from Hashem and talk to this person? What are you supposed to do? I steal from you yeah. one million dollars. Yeah. Okay. You want to talk to me? Yes. Of yes. course I'm going to talk to you because I want my money back. No, but I'm talking about <laughs> you going to be friendly with me. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to give you money. I don't give you money. I tell you I don't give you money at all. <laughs> are you going to be, this is very big test. You're saying that something... You, you don't have to take revenge. But if somebody steals from your money, and money... You have to do, you have to do your proper ishtad loot in order what? to be able... You have to do your proper ishtad loot to get it back. But at the end of the day, yes, it's a kapara from Hashem. I understand kapara from Hashem, but, but my question is, I understand this belief from Hashem, but the question is if you're going to sit down with this person, yes or no? Rabbi, can I answer this question? It happened to me before, and I did. What? Rabbi, can I answer this question? Yeah, go ahead. In this neighborhood, I know a guy, his brother stole three and a half, about three and a half, his brother stole three and a half, he didn't talk to him in seven years. Just a month ago, a month and a half ago, I put a rabbi together with this guy, and he forgave his brothers, divided them, and now they have such a wife, he said, in those six, seven years, he needs them. All the money in the world is not worth when you don't have a family relationship. He changed his mind all the way, he said, the money is not worth it. The, doctor, the, the rabbi was able to tell him that... Who the said this the money doesn't work? The, the one who got stolen from yes. it? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you. So let's get back on the topic. Listen, how everybody's going to go out and in his person... How, how, how a person goes about it... Different? The white different? This big body? That's why the animal. How, how a person goes about his own personal test is between him and God. But this was their test, this was their failing. That they failed to realize that everything that happened to them was Minash Shemaim. The Nitzim Yavolosian writes, the Nitzim Yavolosian writes, Sha'af ayut tzadikim v'chasidim v'amaliyah Torah. You know how far it went that their hatred and their separation between each other went? The Nitzim Yavolosian writes, even though they were tzadikim, they were very careful in mitzvot. They were very midagdek and everything. They were chasidim, they were very machmer and everything. The Amalei Torah, they were able to go shas, mishnayot, everything. They were very from. You would see them, you would think this is one of the Lamed Vav Tzadikim. It says, but what? They didn't respect people that were different from them. I have my way of doing things, you have your way of doing things. For example, I have a shul. I'm running a shul, I have shurim, I have a kolal, everything is good. Right next to me, somebody else opened up a shul, opened up a kolal, opened up everything. How am I going to react? Am I not going to go in there? Am I going to be upset at them? Am I going to make machloket? Or am I going to say, no, Baruch Hashem, there's more Torah. There's another place that people have the ability to go to. There's more minyanim, there's different shurim. Now let people be able to choose where they're going to grow for more. Bechaz de Hashem, Hashem is building more Torah. Is a person, if a person is building it l'shem shamayim, he's happy that there's more Torah. If a person is not doing it l'shem shamayim, it bothers him. He's not going to go in there. They're not going to talk. There's going to be machlok. There's going to be separation. They lose respect for each other and they separate from each other. He says, ah, but they, they have shurim, they have Torah, they have everything. But the fact that it caused separation, the fact that it caused machlok, it shows that you're doing nothing l'shem shamayim. If you would be doing it l'shem shamayim, you would be happy. You would realize that this is the Ratan Hashem, if this is what Hashem wanted, that this is good for everybody here. He says that that was one of their problems. It caused the sinat khim and the separation happen because they weren't able also to accept each other's differences. You are less than me, I am more than you, who are you that I should learn from you, and so on and so forth. It was a very interesting type of a generation. The Vilna Gaon writes, the Vilna Gaon writes something amazing over here. The Vilna Gaon says, 
bitachon, trusting in Hashem, and being happy with what you have in life, and understanding that everything that Hashem gives you is exactly what you're supposed to have. He says it's the complete opposite of desiring something that you are not supposed to have. But he says over here, the ikar in Judaism is bitachon. The main thing through all of a person's Torah, through all of a person's Avodah, is to come to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to realize that Hashem is running the world. He says a person that doesn't have bitachon, even Torah he doesn't have. Even his Torah he doesn't have. He says something fascinating, the Vilagon. The, 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 the he says, Mi sheli bo to bemidat bitachon. If a person has real bitachon in Hashem, that whatever happens to him in, in his life, he says, this is for tov, this is for good, he's happy. Right? He goes, he's supposed to deliver a, a $50,000 diamond, puts it in his pocket, falls out of his pocket. Big loss, right? It's a big loss, right? But what does the person of Abitachon say? Baruch Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took it this diamond, but I'm sure HaKadosh Baruch Hu did it L'tovati. Somewhere else something was supposed to happen to me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave me a kapara this way. He's happy, he goes on, he's besimcha. That's a very big madrega. But that's the madriga that you know that a Kaddish Baruch is running the world. If you weren't meant to have this loss, Hashem wouldn't give it to you. The fact that Hashem gave it to you means that Hashem thought that this is the best thing for you. You trust that Hashem is doing everything that's good for you. He says a person that has bitachon, even though he might do sins, he even though he might sin, he might here and there, he might do very bad averot. Say a person has a big bar bitachon, but sometimes he go to an opposite extreme. Sometimes he falls in certain sins. He ends up in Las Vegas for a week. Gambling. Right? Or a person, right, ends up doing certain sins. But he's really about bitachon. I'm not talking about what people are only on the outside. They talk about Hashem. They talk about Hashem. Then suddenly one person does something back to them. And they curse them for the next two weeks. I'm not talking about people that have only from their mouth. I'm talking about people that have real bitachon. He says, are better than people that don't have bitachon. Even though the people that don't have bitachon, they are sick in Torah, Gemirut Chasidim, a person that has Torah, is better, a person that has bitachon is better than him. Can you believe the Vilna Gaon said such a thing? That a person that has a bitachon, that has real trust in Hashem, is better than somebody who doesn't, even though the person that doesn't is learning Torah and being also Gemirut Chasidim. It's a very fascinating Vilna Bitochon, uh, uh, Vilna Gaon. Brings also over here. It uh, brings also over here in the end of the Chida something very interesting. The Chida writes in the name Ramosha Cordovero. Ramosha Cordovero, when he passed away, he was the author of the Rishut Chochman, the, the Arizal said that he saw the fire of Mount Sinai on Ramosha Cordovero's grave. Moshe Kodovero was a giant. When he wrote a sefer, Rashid Chochmam, and, the, and it came to the Chachamim to give a Haskama, they said we cannot give Haskama on such a sefer because we can only give Haskama on a sefer that we know that the author was on that level. They said it's impossible somebody's on that level. It says the Batko, like a heavenly voice, came down and told the Chachamim that he was really on that level. That the Rashid Chochmam, the Moshe Kodovero was a giant in Torah. Look at the Rashid Chochmam writes. Rabotai, this is a lesson for life. It's, 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 it's not something that a person is going to just grow up to, uh, wake up to and say, okay, now I'm this level, right? But this is a lesson for life. I'm going to read to you his language. It says, Every single person knows that he did Averot. Who could possibly say it's clean from Averot? Especially in this generation, he says. A person, Davan Zurat Kavanot, says Hashem Zurat Kavanah, Hashem Hashem Zurat Kavanah. A person speaks Rosh Aram. A person... Watches things they shouldn't be watching, says things they shouldn't be doing. Person takes merchandise, doesn't pay for it. A person, right? The Kava Yasha writes, even if a person bought a nail in his house and he scooted into the wall and that nail was bought with non-kosher money, a person's tefillah don't get answered. Any gazel a person has, a person took merchandise from somebody and never paid for it. Such a person he could cry all and daven all he wants, Hashem doesn't listen to such a person. At Kedekacha, the sin of a person has to be very careful to have kosher money. A person should be very careful. All his money should be 100% kosher. Shouldn't bring any non-kosher money into your house. All your money has to be kosher. Well, leave it outside. Right? Make, make it hefke. Right? A person says brachot without kavanah. 
Every person knows he did Averot. He says, imagine a person sins, they tell him, oh, you need Tikkun. What's the Tikkun? A person says, I cannot fast. Right? How many fasts does a person need to do in order that if he gets angry one time? 151 times that result says. How many fasts does a person has to fast if he says one not nice thing to his parents? 45 times. A right? person will have to fast his whole entire life like this. But a person cannot. It's a very big tikkun to be able to fast. He said, okay, you know what? The Rabbi Moshe Korovelo says, you have a lot of avalot, you don't fast. Hashem will give you a different kapara. A person's children will die, chas for shalom. Or a person's children will, you know, go off completely and give him tzara his whole life, chas for shalom. That'll be a punishment. Like that happened to Davar HaMelech. When Avshalom passed away, Davar HaMelech, what did he do? He was crying. He said, Bini, Bini, Avshalom, Bini, Bini, Avshalom. He was crying. So they ask, after, after the Davar HaMelech said that, he took his son Avshalom out of all the seven levels of Gehinam. He went all the way into Gehinam. Davar HaMelech was crying, saying, Bini, Bini, Avshalom was taking him level after level, was taking him after hell, out of hell. So they ask, how did he take him out of hell just by saying those words? What was Davar HaMelech crying about? Davar HaMelech was saying, Hashem, my son Avshalom was wicked. You know why? It was a punishment for me. Bini, Bini, Avshalom. It was because he was my son. He was wicked. He doesn't deserve this. It was my punishment that Hashem gave me this such a child, Davar HaMelech said. And by davening and crying to Hashem, saying that it was his fault and not his son's fault, he was able to save him from hell. He says, imagine, so the Ramon Rukul Moshe Kodavah says, okay, you have a lot of it, you can't do Taniyot, Hashem will punish your children, Chas Shalom. He tell him, no, no, Hashem is my name, I can't, that'll be too much for me. Hashem says, okay, you'll have a kapara in your panasan. You'll have no money for the next 20 years, you'll have to be in debt all the time. Or you'll make money, you'll always lose money somewhere else. Something's always going to happen wrong, you're always going to lose money somewhere else. Like they say, you know, you have a holes in your hands. He tell him, no, to be poor is very difficult. You have said, it's better for a person to have all the suffering, but not to be poor. To be poor is very difficult. Right? A person cannot afford anything. It's very... Ani Khashuv Kamet is like a dead person in his heart. He says it's very hard for a person to be able to accept a kapara. So Ramosha Kodavera says, I'm going to give you a kapara that's for free, he says. I'll give you a kapara bazo. I'll give you a kapara that you'll get away cheap. He says, what's that? Without fasting, without suffering, without dipping in the snow, Gilgul Shelig, without a person's children dying, without having to become poor, he says, what's that? Who can guess what it is? He says, La'avir al-midotav. Ve'kola ma'avir al-midotav ma'avirin al-kol pesha'av. You know what that is? When a Kaddosh Baruch Hu sent somebody to come to you. Imagine you did something good for somebody. For years you're helping somebody. Right? You're helping somebody. You're helping somebody. Or you have a partner. For years you're working with each other. Suddenly he two faces you. He goes, opens up behind your back. And puts you in debt and ruins your business. Right? What? It's very difficult. A person feels furious. He says, a person like that, if he's able to say, this is Mina Shemaim. Kadosh Baruch Hu wanted it like this. Mavir al Midotav. He doesn't get angry. He doesn't want to take revenge. He doesn't want to kill the person. He doesn't go around ruining the person's reputation everywhere. A person that's Mavir al Midotav, a person that's able to accept when somebody does something wrong to him, and he's able to be mochal him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, such a person, your Avirot I'll also let go. You were supposed to be poor for the next five years. Somebody did something horrible to you. You're able to be mochel him. I'll mochel you also. You won't, you won't have to suffer the anew to five years. If you're able to forgive people without taking grudges and taking revenge and hating and so on and so forth, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will also forgive you for your Avirot. That's what Moshe Kodavero says. A person who wants to get away cheap, person wants to get away easy in order for him to remove from himself suffering in life is to be able to accept and to understand that everything is Mina Shemaim. Davar HaMelech, he wanted to be the fourth, the fourth uh, leg, the fourth leg to the child, the fourth Avot. He told Hashem, please give me the ability. Hashem told him, I'm going to test you, you're going to fail. He said, how am I? He said, okay, give me the test. What was the test? What about Sheva? Did he fail? He failed, right? But when did Davar HaMelech Zohet to be one of the four Avot of the chariot? You know when? When Davar HaMelech was traveling and Shimi bin Gera, which was one of the Sanhedrin, he took, he took dirt and rocks on the floor and he threw it on Davar HaMelech and he started cursing him in public and degrading him and belittling him in public. And Davar HaMelech's general from the army was there. I think he was Yoav. He said, 
Let me cut off his head. Let me kill him. Dovan Melech said, no. Leave him alone. Why? It's not him. Hashem Omar Lo Kalel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent him to curse me. It's not him. It's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If Hashem wouldn't want him to do this to me, he would never do this to me. The fact that he is doing this to me right now, this is direct message from Hashem. Hashem wants me to have this kapara. And said so at that moment, he was able to realize that everything in the world comes from Hashem. He says that moment he was able to be the fourth chariot. When he's able to realize that Ta'orei Teladad Ki Hashem Hu Enon Bal Vado Kadesh Baruch Hu is the one who runs the world. I'm just going to end off with a Chiddush and we'll do a little halakha. We start the tefillah. Every single day we have four parts of the tefillah. Right? We have the korbanot. Korbanot. Which we come and we say what is the korbanot for? It removes all the tumah. It takes all the tumah, the klipot, it removes all the klipot, all the tumah. The Zohar says, the person that says korbanot every single day, Hashem will give him kapara for all the zavirot. It's like korbanot instead of the Beit HaMikdash. After that, he goes and he says, Psuke de Zimran. Mizmor, you sing Takadosh Baruch you praise Hashem. After that is Olam Abriyan, the next world, which is a very high world, connected to a person's neshama. What's that? A person says, Shema Yisrael. He speaks about the praises of Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shevach, He davens for Torah, for so on and so forth. He praises Hashem tremendously. He accepts Hashem's king's, kingship. And what's the highest level of tefillah? What's the highest level in, in, in the whole tefillah? Olam HaTzilud, the highest world of Shemona Yisrael. And what's in Shemona Yisrael? We're davening for Bracha. We're davening for Siyat HaDishmaya. We're davening for Hashem to save us from our problems. We're davening for Parnasa. We're davening for Rafua. So my father Shem asks, what do you mean? In the highest world, Shemona Yisrei, right now is the time to daven to Hashem for everything that you want. Right now is the time to daven to Hashem for, to be successful and so on and so forth, to buy a house, to die there. Right now is the time. At the end, save it for the end. All the way, all the way at the end of the filah, before we stop, make it filah, ask whatever you want, say, okay, thank you Hashem, and that's it. If anything, Olam HaTzilut Shemona Yisrei, should be all about praising Hashem, Ateo Hashem Lokim, Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Shema Yisrael. That's what Shemona Yisrael should be. Why in Shemona Yisrael are we asking Hashem for everything? In the highest world, this is the time? You know what the Saba Mekelem says? He says, you know what the highest level of spirituality is? It's not to be able to say, Hashem, you're the king. Hashem runs the world. Hashem Melech. Hashem created the sun. Hashem is in heaven. Hashem is there. The highest level in spirituality, he says, is to realize that everything in physicality is in front of Hashem. That everything physical is from Hashem. You need a Rufua, where is it from? Hashem. You need Panasa, where is it from? Hashem. You need Hashem to save you from a certain problem in life, where is it from? Hashem. He says, that's Olam Atzilut. The highest level in spirituality is when a person realizes that everything in the physical world is from Hashem. If a person is very religious, he does everything, but he doesn't realize that everything in his life is from Hashem, he missed the point. The highest level is to realize everything is Hashem. And he says, that was the problem of the Khurban Abayit. And the Khurban Abayit, they were learning Torah, they were medad, they, mitzvot, they, were very, they did everything. But they didn't realize that everything in their life comes from Hashem. And that's what created that hatred. That's what created that separation. That's what happens. That's what created that uh, you're different than me. I don't like you. You open up a competitive school. I don't want to talk to you. I badmouth you because you opened up another school. You did this, you did that. Separation. Why separation? If you really believe that everything is from Hashem and you realize that HaKadosh Baruch is doing everything good for the good of Kalal Yisrael, you should be happy. You should say, this is the Ratan Hashem, there should be more Torah and more Yerat Shemaim. When you see Hashem is running the world, you're accepting, you're loving, you accept what Hashem does by Simchat. That's the level that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants. But when a person could do everything, but he doesn't realize that when something doesn't go his way, that is Mina Shemaim, he missed the whole point. He says that was their mistake in the second Beit Mikdash, is that they didn't Realize that Hashem is running the world. That's the girl says, like we mentioned before, that a person who has emunah and bitachon is better than a person who doesn't, even though the person who doesn't learns Torah and does everything. Let's push it I want to do a few alachot. I want to get into a few alachot. We have a few minutes left. I'm just going to make an introduction. A lot of people, they ask, what's the difference between Pat Israel and not Pat Israel? Anybody know the difference between Pat Yisrael and not Pat Yisrael? What's the difference between OU bread or OU bread that, that with the Hasid Sheikh that says this Pat Yisrael? This is bread, this is bread. This has kosher ingredients, this has kosher ingredients. 
The Uzbek bake this one, the Uzbek bake that one. What's the difference? He says, you know the difference is? It says the Chachamim, right? During the time of the Chachamim, they came and they made a lot of gezerot. They made a lot of decrees. They wanted to keep us away from the Goyim. And they realized there's certain things that keep us very close to the Goyim. So say if a Goy cooks food, you're not allowed to eat it. Why? They wanted to separate us from the Goyim. Because if the Goy would cook and we would eat it, it would bring us to get close to them. We would eat by them. They would cook for us. It would bring us to mingle to them. Right? So the Chamim said, no. Anytime a Goy cooks something, you're not allowed to eat it. Now, you're going to go, a Goy is going to cook something, you can't eat it. It creates a separation between you and him. The Chamim said, you know what? They saw that bread is something that people are always going to the non-Jewish bakeries, talking and getting involved. And the Goy is inviting you to his house, come and eat. And you're sitting and you're eating because you could eat. There's nothing wrong with just bread. And you'd start with the bread and so it would come to get close to them. It would lead to other things. Chamim said, no. If a Goy break bread, you're not allowed to eat it. Why? Create separation. Create a distance. In order to create a distance for Kalal Yisrael, because a lot of the Jews were very easily going into intermingling with the Goyim. So in order to keep us away, the Chamim came along and they said, bread baked by Goy, not allowed to eat. So therefore, what did the Chamim see? But then they saw that once they made the Gezerah, it's very hard to go and buy bread. Not, every, not all the time did you have enough Jewish bakers. If you have to, you're not going to buy bread from a Goy, it was very hard for them. Chamim said, okay, certain instances you're allowed to. Say in places where there's no other bread to be found anywhere, the Chamim said, okay, like that you're allowed to. But this Isur, this prohibition of that a Jew has to be involved in a big breading, which is called Pat Yisrael, did not spread everywhere. When they first made the Gezerah, it wasn't accepted everywhere because it was very hard. It was the Gezerah, Shein Rova Tziburi Yicholim Na'amod Bo. It was a decree that not most people were able to withstand. For example, there were certain communities, they only had one Jewish baker. He needed to make bread for thousands of families there. There was no way in the world. They had to go to the Goyim. So certain communities, it was never accepted because it was impossible for them to be accepted. So there, we're more like the Ashkenazi communities. According to the Shulchan Aruch, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to be in very short. It's a long siman. I'm just going to be in short, just for the basics of it, and maybe we'll continue in details what's included in another time. The Shulchan Aruch said, anytime a goy bakes bread and there's no Jewish intervention, it, it's a sur to eat that bread. That's what we call today regular OU bread. Any cookie or any bread that just has a regular OU, a regular chavke, anything like that, is not Pat Yisrael, there's no Jewish intervention. What the OU means over there, and what the Kafka and all these other Echsher mean, that the ingredients here are kosher. That's the only thing they had taken responsibility for. Is the ingredients here were kosher. But the baking was fully done by a goy. According to the Shulchan Aruch, simply, right, such bread is not permissible to be eaten. According to the Ramah, the Ashkenazim, they're more lenient. They say, no, they never accepted this Isur so much upon themselves. The Ramah, the Ashkenazim say, you're allowed to eat bread baked by a Goish baker that he's using for sale. Now, even though simply, according to the Shulchan Aruch, we're not allowed to eat bread baked by a Goy. We have to buy patistral. We have to buy bread that had some Jewish intervention, that a, that a Jew lit the fire, he was involved in making the fire, making, involved in making the bread, or even just throwing a little coal in the fire just to create that recognition, that separation, right? So, strict letter of the law, the Sephardim really shouldn't be able to eat such bread. However, there are different menagim, there are different exceptions, there are different rules that Bizat uh, Hashem will get into another time. But that's the general gezeran, that they decree that bread baked by goy we're not allowed to eat because in order to be able to create that separation. But certain instances, we are allowed to. This also would apply to cereals. A lot of the cereals are fully baked by Goyim. So what would be the head to eat all the cereals? That the Shem will continue another time.